It's an interesting one. I think Mo Salah's amazing. The only thing I'm reluctant to do is jump on this. Football's at a much lower standard now than it used. I still think it's a very, I think it's a very good standard. I don't think the Premier League in the last four or five years is as competitive as it was between sort of 2004 and around 2013. I feel like that era where you just had four teams every season in the Premier League that were capable of winning the Champions League, which, by the way, had seven or eight other teams that were all capable of winning it at the same time. That was when the highest level of quality was in European football in my lifetime. I can't talk before the 80s because I wasn't born. But yeah, I am reluctant to start talking about the standard of football now is on its ass because Man United, is, if I if I set that narrative and then Man United start winning trophies, what am I going to start playing that down because it's in the bad era? No fucking chance. I ain't doing Wait, that. Wait, but Terry, I don't think it's black and white though. Um, Kind of it's like, so with like that tweet that you brought up about the guy naming like all the world-class players from maybe mm-hmm. like 20 years ago. I, I do think that, and I, I wasn't watching back then, but I do think that the standard has dropped off a little bit from like the early 2000s per se. But that doesn't mean that the players currently now aren't better than, let's say, players from like the 50s and 60s, right? Because like whenever I see clips from like the 50s and 60s, I'm gonna be real. Those players look like they suck, but everybody talks about them. Yeah. Like it's like they're like the greatest ever. Yeah. But what you got to remember of- with that, Will, what you got to remember, sorry to butt in though, what you got to remember with that for the players from that era is they were playing with what looked like boots from building sites on pitches that were uneven with balls. So, for instance, the, the, the balls, I don't know, the balls that we use in England and these big leather balls, when they were wet, yeah. they weighed like two bags of sugar. Yeah. So these men were kicking a ball that was like a medicine ball around a football pitch. And I think that those types of things, or, uh, to your point, always have to be kind of factored into these conversations. That- well, no, for sure. But, like, I saw a clip. I can't name you the goalkeeper. It was a black and white clip. There was a long-range shot. The goalkeeper made a standard save. And, like, yeah, the sure. commentary back then was like, oh, my goodness, like, he's world class. Like, he's the best. This is why this – I forget the goalkeeper's name. But, like, the way that they were going on about a basic save – but you I could argue so, that this is what I'm saying in terms could of you argue that about Jesse Owens though. Jesse Owens' time of winning the Olympics wouldn't qualify him today to go to the Olympics. No, that so yeah. no way. I think no, that's why you've got to be saying, careful. Like, no, no, so but what Terry, so like what I'm saying is yes, e- even though the standard from that let's say 15 years ago has dipped off a little bit, I still think that the players that we see now across any mm. sport, like basketball, uh, yeah. like this sport, any sport. What you're seeing currently now is better than what you saw 40 or like 30 years ago because their version of the game was so slimpistic that it's so much advanced now that, yeah, Mm -hmm. so for Jesse Owens, for example, for his time, he was great. But in the grand scheme of things, no, he's not great. Like, would he beat a Usain Bolt? No. He's not great. No, for for his time, he was great. But But if I'm factoring in the athletes now who would dust him, yeah, but they didn't have that, this, they didn't have that technology thing, back then. Yeah, like, would, 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 if, you, if, you took, if you could go to take Jesse Owens at 16 years old now, take him in the time machine to now and, and nurture him through this era with the food, the technology, the spikes, I reckon he'd run faster than 10.2 seconds. Yeah, but we can't do that. I could only go off of what he did back then, and now the runners <laughs> now are, are just more advanced. But hold on, wait. But then some of these runners who are faster than him get called trash or, oh, like they suck. But then you're gonna go rate Jesse Owens, who times they clear. So it, it, it's it's kind of like like it's like the athletes now are better than what they were 50 years ago. I think I, I think I'm just changing. I, I think the word look again, right? I, again, I'm of the more younger gen, you know, your generation, right? And and to me, the term is of of world class has gone genuinely out. Out of the window, uh, I've seen people already calling Cole Palmer uh, 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 class, uh, they got etc. etc. Et 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 to me, yeah, f- uh, first of all, um, Troy Dini calling Salad not world class, that uh, again, s- s- sound guy, but he's, uh, but he's a Watford player, guys. He, he's an ex Watford player to talk about Mohammed Salad, bro. Bro, this guy, when he broke out in his first. Season he puts up Ballon d'Or numbers. I I I don't think people want to understand this, right? Mohamed Salah, he he for me is the second greatest winger in the Premier League of all time. I I 
I, I go, I'm in United fan saying this with chess, by the way, right? This guy is Dude, who's the best, bro. Uh, bro, for me, I'm gonna stick him on my, uh, uh, my boy Bexy, man. Uh, to, uh, to David Beckham, bro, like you know what I mean. But anyway, yeah, Salah, bro, I'm seeing him, yeah, already 20 GA already. And 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 I and, and I've seen people uh, people like, people like oh, 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 oh wait until Salah goes to uh, to uh, to a different team he'll decline bro when you are like that you do not drop down a lot and I think that oh, 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 you're an athlete right you do not become washed overnight. Right, right, you don't, right? That's like me say to Terry, right? Michael Carrick, age like 34 years of age, under Mourinho was washed. Right, no, he wasn't. Right, bro, 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 when you are elite, you do not lose that class. No. So, look, right. Terry, is, is just, I was, go I was yeah. gonna just say, because, um, Terry, Terry. In, how do you guys kind of when you define standards, and I think my bias is because a lot of you guys obviously kind of, sort of you got support Man United and Liverpool, so when you guys determine when you guys say oh the the standards have dropped off from before i think you guys are talking from like what you guys have seen ch champions leagues and stuff like that maybe my perspective is a little bit more unique whereas obviously i seen when i started my, supporting my club newcastle were there and i've seen them obviously decline over 15 years but during that time i've also seen um clubs at a lower level rise brighton's bournemouth eddie howe brought in a, a you know not hoof ball style but on the ground playing football style so in my mind when, when people say the jack standards have dropped off i'm like really like i've never known uh, for instance back in the day bolton or anything blackburn playing the kind of style that uh bournemouth are playing now brighton are playing now you know um sometimes you get you know you've got a guy 31 years old at, at brighton do out doing Guardiola at Guardiola Bowl almost so, like you weren't seeing that back in the day. I, I can't name a manager. I don't think there was a 31 year old manager who came into the Premier League and was playing this style of level of football. So um, I think maybe when I hear like, and I get what, for instance, what Terry was saying earlier about Champions League and four teams that could win it, maybe because I'm looking from the other side, I'm like, that is true. And what is also true that, that the, the, the clubs on the other hand, on the other level, maybe the bottom half of the league, that level has has, has risen. So, like, whenever I hear analysis yeah, yeah. a lot of the times, whether it's Arsenal fans, Man United fans, whoever, for instance, they'll always say, um, "We didn't." So we, we didn't beat Newcastle because we didn't play well. And I'm always like, "You didn't play beat Newcastle because Newcastle are a better team than they were before." So no, I, I, I agree with that, and I think you've, you've had some really good balance of the conversation there as well. And I think that there is that's why I re reject the notion that the Premier League's a farmers' league, even though City yeah. won the most. The farmers' league. I, I don't like re when phrases get redefined, and farmers' league always meant there was one or two very good teams, but the overall yeah. standard was was trash. That's always yeah. what it meant. So everybody thought it to mean it you know you look at um league art is like that the amount of times you'll see psg in the quarterfinals of the champions league they'll get they'll have a game on a saturday in in league r and they will rotate 11 players yeah you've never been able to do that in the premier league you can't do it in the premier league you will lose and typically speaking you'll lose or you're, or you're a big risk of dropping points and two things could be true terry Two things what, could be in, true. In what, the Premier in what League way? is a Farmers League. No, that's not what because Farmers League is. Because sorry. if any other league no, 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 had no, one team sorry, win it four or not, five times, no, straight, that's, but that's not what on. we call. No, no, but we're redefining what the term Farmers League always meant. Farmers League didn't mean one team always wins it. You can call it a, a league where one team has the monopoly, where one team is dominating, where one team is out, you know, better than everybody else. What we're saying in England is in the English league, and I think Spain is a lot like this, I think Italy mm. has become like this as well, is you can get a team in 10th place who will give a, a very hard game to the teams right at the top. I don't think if you go to Portugal, I don't think if you go to uh, Scotland, I don't think if you go to France, that the teams mid-table and below give higher-level competitive games week in, week out against the top sides. But and, this isn't, and this isn't a fan opinion. Mm -hmm. This comes from the players themselves. When they move to the Prem or they move to the Liga from those other leagues, when you listen to their interviews and th their feedback, it's can't believe how hard it is. I remember Kai Havertz saying when he was at Chelsea that when you went away from home, 
to a number of the teams in that league or played them or played them at home. It was a relatively easy afternoon. We did in England, like every game is this massive battle. So for oh, yeah. me, I I just don't like find a new word for it, but farmers league typically means the overarching quality, once you go out the top two or three, is severely lacking. And I don't think that's what the so Premier League is. So then every other league in the world is in a farmer's league according no, to a it's Prem not, thing. No, no. It's, not, it's not that. The reason why it's not that is if you go through the list... Of, all right, so we're talking about City turning into a farmer's league, quote-unquote, right? Because okay. they've won it so many times recently. But if you actually look at the times they've won it and you look at the seasons they've won it, Liverpool finished behind them twice by one point. Arsenal's finished behind them by one point once. A couple of times there's been bigger gaps. If you're have if you have a team that's winning it far and away, like I'm talking about a distance, they're winning it, wrapping up by April on a regular basis, then we can call it a farmers league. But when you're being pushed to the limit, whether you get over the line or not, whether you're being pushed to the limit, and the fact that we can have a show as this is called called the top six show, that shows that the level is not crap in the Premier League. No, think, bro, but I'm not saying oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. My no, no, so, I, so that's why I don't think it could be a call of farmers league. In the same way, I completely agree with what um Toon Tactics was saying. Yes, you've got your levels like R9 and all that from back in the day, but name me an era R9 would have walked into and be the best player in the world in. There isn't one. So <laughs> yeah. we're looking at, yeah. we're looking yeah. at the absolute yeah. best and comparing him to everyone else. Like Messi's another one. Messi walks into every era, but Messi's from this generation. The level at the top back in the day, in my opinion, was so far so far beyond the level of 10th place and down that these players look so amazing. Whereas now the levels are balancing out. So 10th mm. place, you can't just walk to 10th place and, and get a four or five nil win easily. You're gonna have to grind out a one nil or two one yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. So the quote unquote top players look more average now, but it's not the case. The mm. the average players of yesteryear are now better than ever. You've yeah. got players like Embuermo at Brentford who's putting Wissa. up double figures. Like, Wissa putting up double figures. That would never happen back in the day. Yeah. It's no. happening regularly yeah. now. Do you know what, fellas? You know what? This season, I think, is going to really show it. Because ultimately, you've seen Arsenal drop off. You've seen Man City drop off. And I know you boys were talking about um, you know, Liverpool being favourites. But ultimately, the, the, the schedule is so busy, they're going to have their, their, their fighting time and I think I reckon they're going to lose three or four games to be fair as well and if you I do I do I, maybe not maybe not fight, let's not put that in the atmosphere but, yeah, though, sorry, sorry, yeah sorry <laughs> yeah sorry manifest that one um but um I think as you as all of you know the fellas have said I think the standard in the league across the whole you know 18 clubs or whatever is so much higher than you know as you say like this the farmers league in like Scotland with Celtic and I think every game you've got to go and win and I think this season you're really going to see that. And I see I see Liverpool losing. I still I see Arsenal losing more games. Man City losing more games because the standard is higher. And when it comes down to the, the world class players, you know, we, it, it is fun for us to talk about. You know, we could talk about like Van Dijk being potentially the best centre bar half, but then he never played Henri, he never played Van Nistelrooy, he never played, um, yeah. you know, um, Drogba or anyone like that. Drogba, yeah, Drogba. Like it, it's it, it's lovely for us to, to talk about because we'd love to see it. But I think the standard has, is better than it's ever, ever been. Um, and I just think the, the levels between the world, world-class players mm. is not as defined as it was. I, I, I hear that. I think you see this in a lot of sports, though, as well. You know, I hear a comment saying that the standards have never been so low from her. I know, I know uh, Kopish Cow watches a lot of MMA like I do. The fighters now yeah. are of such a high level across the, the mixture of the arts. So when MMA first started, and probably from the early 90s right through really until maybe sort of 2010, it was quite a while, you would have, this guy's a great boxer, this guy's a great kickboxer, this guy's an amazing wrestler, he's a great grappler. You had a handful of people that could mix a couple of those disciplines together. The last 15 years, what you have started to see is people that are so multifaceted to a point where... Well, I've got a good friend who's in the, the UFC, Michael Page, who just recently went and won. He did it on. He did it via the UFC. He, he, he went and won a grappling fight, and he, they kind of did it to show he could grapple. Now he is not a world class grappler by any means, but he can grapple as a striker. He grapples to a level now that is probably superior to that of all of the non grapplers mm. in the previous sort of twenty odd years That's because easy. of the way the, the way the standards have gone up. However, it's just it doesn't take away from that that era. It's just training's different. And this is why I, I sort of disagree when it comes back to looking at eras. 
you look at the way like football YouTube works, just the industry we're all in. There's a lot more competition now, but the reason why it's easier for an up and coming creator to start making content is because people like Red Men TV, AFTV, the United Stand, and a few others that have been around a long time, they have paved the way and have shown people how to do it. Yeah. So yourself, when someone starts Harry, their own yourself, channel, bring yourself in there as well. Uh, maybe the football terrace goes in there, but. It's like panel shows. We were the first channel to start doing panel shows, especially covering multiple clubs as an example. Now, everyone does them, and there's no issue with that whatsoever. But the point is, some people might go, oh, that channel over there is so much better than the football terrace. And mm. I can accept the, the criticism. However, without channels like mine that started these, there's other, mm. they might have thought of the idea themselves and started doing yeah. it, but it wouldn't mm. exist. You know, and by the way, we didn't invent podcasts. They were happening in other industries before us. So I'm not sitting here and pretending that I count the concept of a podcast or any of these people did. But I always feel like you've got to pay a little homage to what came before you in any industry, in any walk of life. Because what we all do, and I do this as well, is we all essentially stand upon the shoulders of giants and then try and take things to that next level. Um, Sorry, and, always, it, it, and it typically yeah. gets easier. Now, I was going to add to that. I also think, and maybe because it's the younger generation that watched the clips from before, because they always see clips of um, the great players, whether it's Ronaldo or whatnot, like going past five different players. They think that's what the, the whole, <laughs> every game yeah. was like that. Because they always say, oh, it was, it's system-based now. It's system-based. It's, there's always a system. Like since football was invented, there was always a system. Mm. And so it's not like, people were just freestyling and dribbling and kicking the ball over people's heads like through the whole course of the 90 minutes. That's just highlights that you're seeing. If you, you see these games from zero to 90 minutes, overall standards isn't much different to what it is now, probably even a drop-off. But you've obviously had magical players like Ronaldo creating those magical movements. Yeah. Yes, you can see Roberto Carlos bending the ball, going, yeah, yeah. almost going away from the goal. Watch that whole game for the 90 minutes. And then, and then tell me, you know, oh, yeah, you know, that was uh, um, Zidane scoring that incredible volley uh, against Leverkusen in the final. I watched that game. That game wasn't the greatest game. It was that magical moment that made it what it is. So, yeah. Our line's a great example. All of us know how good he was. And I am not playing him down. I'm playing devil's advocate here for anyone who wants to clip this up or cry. If he was playing today there would be people that would call him a fraud when it comes to Champions League football. He never won the trophy. He made 40 appearances, only got 14 goals in the competition. Now, again, he played in an era where the UEFA Cup was a much higher standard than it is now, where he also yeah. scored 15 goals. But the point is, if he played now and his career went exactly the same, people would turn around and say, yeah, but what's he doing in the Champions League? What's he done in this competition? What about this? People would start, again, what the previous generations didn't suffer with. People say now stats elevate players to a higher level, and I can understand that. But equally, the holes, in, no one when I was growing up knew that Henri never scored in the final. Yeah. None of us thought about yeah. it because the information wasn't readily available. Now we know. It's like, oh, bloody hell, that's, that's a mad one. However, if that all that information was readily available 20 years ago, that would have probably probably been labelled against Omri and the conversations would have happened. So mm. you could argue in this era, it's even harder to get recognised because the level of scrutiny you face is yeah. probably more intense now than any other generation of football players have ever gone through. Is that with you, right? right? People always bring up the uh, thing of, oh, okay, cool, we scored this many goals. Where's his UCL? Was European medal and bro, like, like bro, people forget the uh, 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 Zlatan scored an overhead kick. Mm. I think in the, I think in the oh six, I think it was. I, 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 I wrong on the bro, bro, bro. That goal is considered the one of the greatest goals of all time. And and I, 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 I if you look at uh, players like Steven Gerrard, right. Uh, 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 Callum, how many times have you heard the, uh, 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 a phrase mm, where well overrated? Overrated. No, 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 he literally carried Liverpool to come back from 3-0 down against AC Milan and then they 
you, you might be the best. You might be the best Man United fan. I swear. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no, 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 anyone else? And just, just nah. say. It. Do you think Harry? Uh, I, just, I didn't need to let Harry know this is his last appearance on the football <laughs> territory. <laughs> 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 keep cooking, but, 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 Harry. Keep cooking, bro. I, I, I think that the you, uh, 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 you today, right? I'm talking younger than myself, right? I haven't seen eleven and, and twelve year olds looking at um, Erling Haaland. You're twelve. No, no, no. <laughs> bro, I thought you said you were I don't know. I don't know. Him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, I'm seeing people in like year seven watching Harland, Mbappe, Cole Palmer. And I'm like, like raw. They are like unreal. Brother, I watched the whole career of Eden Hazard. Yeah. A whole career of Mesut Ozil in an in, in Arsenal shirt. Bro, Arsenal fans don't know more, more than me. The day he signed for Arsenal, Sky Sports deadline, and they also Arsenal fans were like, "Yeah, with the live on telly, yeah, bro, we, bro, bro, bro uh, we seen players do you find as world class, right? And in their own right, they are. But the youth of today, in my personal opinion, are starting to tarnish that word of world class uh, because they're putting players in. Who are bro, bro, bro? Cup Palmer was like 21, 22, and it's being deemed world class of scoring four goals and and one half. It's like, bro, a term world class means that, bro, you are like unreal, you're doing things that are unheard of, and you don't need accomplishments to prove it, Ebra. But, but, but again. I, I want to uh, uh, huh? what your tactics said about the whole Brentford uh, and Newcastle thing because, bro, you had told me uh, just Brentford uh, 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 Newcastle in in in, in, in the 20s, 20s be in the UCL. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, mate, no, 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 it ain't happening. But, bro, it, it, it happened. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say on the world class thing, it's not the young, it's not the twelve and fifteen year olds, it's the thirty year olds that are shocking me. Troy Deeney saying Mo Salah's not world class. I've yeah, seen yeah, people yeah. on the panel saying, <laughs> you know, like so it's not the twelve year olds. Yeah. They're just listening to what the older lot are saying. And so I'm, that's, that's what always amazes me about that. Like, you know, and I think I don't mind. You have got to define what your terms for class is. Like for me, it's a little bit. It's a. It's a bit. It's, it's different from from like legends. Like you just mentioned legends earlier, Badger and stuff like that. I think world class isn't necessarily like static. It can move um, like almost like a Premier League table, but over a consistent period of time. So just because Eden Hazard was maybe world class for four, three, four years, when he was at Real Madrid, he definitely wasn't world class. He wasn't available to be world class in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think it goes back and forwards, and it depends on like, what that period of time is really. Can I just say something? Yeah, I, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry, you know, sorry. sorry, sorry. Do you know who I think are the real beneficiaries of this though? Is the youngsters where, you know, that we talk about legends and, and watching them and watching them on YouTube, where I remember mm. I was growing up and they were talking about these people over in Spain and you couldn't even get a game. You couldn't yeah, get a game on yeah, TV. Yeah, exactly. Like you, couldn't, you couldn't go exactly. to YouTube. So you talk about the standards, you know, potentially dropping, but ultimately it's only going to rise because, you know, I remember, I remember watching, like trying to watch uh, Ronaldinho and going, like trying to copy his skills because you yeah. see little bits, yeah. but you couldn't see it all the time. Where yeah. these kids can just go on YouTube and go, oh, this player, I'm going to watch Erden hard and let's see what he does. Let's see his movement. Yeah. And the next 10, 15 years, it's only going to get better because they've got the access to actually see and watch it day in, day out, or, or go on YouTube or get it back on. T it's it's only going to be more exciting. I think football's only going to get better and better and better, and 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 that that gap's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And I think in the end, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna peak. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Jerry. I no, go on, mate. Go on. I just I just had that great go on, mate. I was gonna say I don't think um that what Dini said is anything that's wrong. Like I, I'm not sure how old he is, but he's probably comparing it to again like that tweet said with the names with the players that are world class from. No, he's comparing ago. it to his kid. He said he literally he said, said I wouldn't want my kid to play well, like no. him. Well, so I well he's younger than me. But what I'm saying is he's probably grown up watching players that he views as world class and then he's seeing what we call world class now he's a Vinicius junior yeah so he's a Vinicius junior i don't think i don't think troy is older than terry
Uh, look, I want to go to some of these super chats here. First one says, uh, although uh, the level of teams across the league has improved, the level of individual footballer has declined, in my opinion. But this is the question, though, has been made. If the overall level improves, does that stop? Do, you, mm. do we have a lot more bigger fishes in a much bigger pond as mm. opposed to a number of big fishes in a, in a much smaller pond with a lot of tiddlers. So they stood out a little bit more. That's perspective is really, really important. You know, you could have a, I had a friend at school and it was Ashley White. And this kid was the fastest kid in our school. He could run 100 meters faster than anybody else. Then we went to the districts and he came last. He didn't look fast at districts. He looked really <laughs> slow at district level. He looked slow because he was suddenly up against people that were quicker than him. Perspective is key. Uh, for me personally, bringing AC Milan back to the top holds so much more weight than winning the Champions League with PSG. I would like to see him build like Klopp did. It's a very, very, very good point there, Nick. I don't think he'll do it, but I would like to see him do that as well. I do agree with you. Uh, at some point, science and evolution has to factor in and emotions put to the side. If all world-class 11s uh, now played, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, you could probably get with fitness and st standards like that, there is an argument to say a team like Brighton could beat some of the greatest teams from the 50s, 60s, and 70s purely on fitness and, and being able to run faster and everything else. So that's mm. it depends on the rules, though. If you let them tackle like they did in the 70s, every team today loses. <laughs> you let them tackle like it's the 70s, everyone loses. Uh, George Best at half time would down a few pints of beer and smoke two cigarettes and then put on a clinic context. This is true. There was a great story about Georgie Best that I read where he, <laughs> he turned up to a game, he was so drunk. Uh, he crashed his car into the side of the changing room, like crashed his car, went in, went in, scored at trick, went home, woke up the next day and had to read the papers to even realize if he played or not. That was that that era was a madness, bruv. That era was a madness. Uh, what separates this era from others is the emphasis on stats has reached a tipping point. People just pull out spreadsheets now in every database. I think stats play a part, but we, one thing I always say about attackers anyway is all the guys we mention as legends, they all have fucking good stats, don't they? Mm. They all have very good GA. Yeah. Like I, what I don't like is someone who gets called world-class where their GA is awful. Cause I just think, how can you be a world-class attacker with no end product? That's the most important thing you do. But, uh, but if hey, I met sorry, on that too, just for you, well, mate. I fully agree with that super chat in the sense that stats have to be contextualized, but the eye test is subjective as well. Yeah. What I like in a footballer, someone else might dislike. So, again, you have to merge the two together. It can't just be one or the other. Got, of course, subjectivity comes into it. Otherwise, Henry wouldn't ever miss his. Do you know what I mean? Like It's just one of them things oh, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that is unreal. Uh, <laughs> if I met Troy, I would ask him if his kids love Lewandowski. And if uh, they agree, I would consider them world-class love for Team Coppish. is from Red Indian. Uh also, here says, uh, Callum, uh, what's your take on Mo Salah not mentioned in the, on the overlap as being the best player of the decade? Oh, yes, it's their opinion, man. I, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's their opinion. Carragher, Carragher's doing a thing at the moment. It feels as though where he's overcompensated so he doesn't come across biased as a Liverpool fan. And Gary Neville's seen Man United players who could be in that conversation. So he's going to kind of root for those guys because he played in teams with some mm. of those guys. So, mm. yeah, I don't really, yeah, it is what yeah. it is. Yeah, I, I hear you.